We're in a clean energy paradise here in Finland. The electricity grid is running at 90 to 90 percent, 90 to 95 percent carbon free. They've got the second cheapest electricity in Europe, all thanks to nuclear. Europe's newest re reactor, the first for 25 years, opened at Okiloto Island on the west coast of Finland this time last year. And between that and the other two reactors on Okiloto Island, it's producing one third of Finland's power, reliably 24 hours a day around the clock. I went to Okiloto Island earlier this week to take an exclusive look at how nuclear actually works. In Australia, the ugly truth about renewable energy is beginning to hit home. Energy Minister Chris Bowen says we need one of these giant wind turbines to be completed every 18 hours if we're to meet the government's target by the end of the decade. But the destruction of vast swathes of native bushland comes at a tremendous environmental and economic cost, which is why many Australians are looking abroad to see if there might not be a better way. This is Okilotu Island on the west coast of Finland, 250 kilometres from Helsinki. It's home to Europe's most cutting-edge nuclear reactor. Okilotu 3 was completed last year. It was built alongside two existing reactors that are more than 40 years old. Together, they generate a third of Finland's electricity. Oh, this may were about 800 metres from the Okilotu 3 reactor, the new one pumping out 1.6 gigawatts at, at its uh, at full capacity and not a squeak. I mean, hardly a squeak. There's a slight rumble in the background, but everything else is just peaceful and on a, the edge of the Baltic Sea here. Just, just this lovely spot. You could come for a holiday here. I'm quite happily, I would quite happily settle for a holiday cottage right here. I tell you what, right here. And the good thing is the lights wouldn't go out. Construction of Okiloto 3 began in 2005. The plan was to have it operating by 2009, but the project faced numerous delays, largely because of regulatory issues, technical challenges, and disputes between the owner, TVO, and the main contractor, Arriva Siemens Consortium. Despite the delays and challenges, construction continued, and last year, 14 years behind schedule, the superheated, pressurised steam began turning the turbines and Okiloto 3 went online. So here it is, Okiloto, Okiloto 3. This is the first, first reactor to be built in Europe for 25 years, up and running nicely. It's actually, today it's not in commission, it's resting, it's being tested and that's the steam you can come, see coming off, that's the release valve that we've released the steam in an emergency. It's just being tested. Normally you'd see nothing. There's nothing coming out of this. No carbon dioxide, nothing. Just electricity, 1.6 gigawatts of electricity. Solidly around the clock for 95% of the time. Wonderful thing. Now, how much would it cost you to build one of these? How much did it cost them to build this one? I am told reliably 5.6 billion euro was the price tag on this to the company that built it. That's about 9.6 billion Australian dollars, somewhat cheaper than the snowy hydro, pumped hydro scheme, which is not nearly completed yet, and yet this is up and running. This one took longer than expected to build, but, but so is the snowy hydro. So you take your pick, what do you want for your $12 billion or whatever snowy hydro is? Do you want a snowy hydro, pumped hydro system, which may or may not work, or do you want one of these? It seems quite reasonable value really, especially when you think this is going to be in service for 60 years minimum, probably 80 years, possibly I'm told even 100 it's built that well. So you want one, you do it the best, you do one like this. One of the things that strikes you is how incredibly compact a nuclear reactor is. If you compare the number of hectares per unit of electricity produced with a, say, wind turbine development, the results are not even close. Let's take a look at the Caban development in far north Queensland, for example. Caban has a nameplate capacity of 156 megawatts when it's running at full tilt. But since it's only running for about 25% of the time at best, we'll adjust those figures accordingly. We know that the Caban sits on 1,330 hectares, so it requires 34 hectares to produce one megawatt of power. 
Okiluto 3 has a capacity of 1,600 megawatts. That's 10 times more than the maximum output of Caban. And it runs for 95% of the time, so let's discount its capacity accordingly. Okiluto 3 has a footprint of 17 hectares, 78 times smaller than Caban. So per megawatt hour produced, that works out at 0.01 hectares per megawatt hour for nuclear, which makes it 780 times more land efficient than wind power. Well, it is, it really is quite a stunning area. You, you, you'd happily take a little cottage for a weekend if it was there, or even longer. It's it, beautiful here in the Baltic. This is the Baltic Sea. And um, this time of year, springtime in Finland, a relatively warm day. It's very pleasant indeed. And look, the natural beauty is all around you. And, and I think the reason, the main reason I wanted to show you this spot is just look behind me over there. There it is. The Okiloto nuclear power station. Three reactors pumping out a third of Finland's electricity at any given moment. And what a lovely spot. I mean, you couldn't put it anywhere nicer, could you? And that's the point. I mean, whereas the... The kind of generators I've been looking at in Australia, the wind and solar, they they destroy wildlife. Uh, they they frighten away wildlife. They destroy refuge for wildlife up there on the Great Dividing Range where it's never been farmed, and that's a place where these uh, birds and creatures can actually find refuge. That's a destructive uh, form of energy. Here, it's the very opposite. You surround very small footprint of that nuclear power station with this beautiful parkland. Actually, Nikki, they tell me uh, old growth forest. This has never been touched by farming and it is a haven to wildlife. Wolves, apparently. Watch out for those. Moose, uh, various kinds of deer. Uh, they are to the Finnish driver what the kangaroo is to the Australian driver, I'm told, you've got to watch out for them. And there are a lot of them around here because this is actually a haven for wildlife. This is what we could be creating at, um, you name it, you know, Arara. Close the, close the coal-fired power station when we're ready. Put up a nuclear power station and then build a lovely bit of parkland around it. Why not? If only we could get this into their thick heads on the left. They just don't get it, do they? That, Nuclear is not only the cleanest, uh, the safest, and the most reliable form of nuclear we've got with um, like 95% capacity rate here. That means it runs for 95% of the time compared to 25 maybe for wind or solar. Not only that, but it is also has the least impact on the environment, which is why the Greens should be loving it and why the Greens in Finland do.